of describing curves. The parametric description naturally builds a so-called orientation into the curve. It gives you a sense of direction, all right? And that's why we use paths to describe the motion of physical bodies. In fact, physics is built with paths, all right? Um, okay, so getting back to this question, what's the Cartesian equation? So you got x equals to cosh t, right? y equals to sinh t. What, what's your goal if you're trying to find the Cartesian equation for a parametrically described curve? Your, your goal is to eliminate the parameter by some method. And the method varies from problem to problem. For this one, I think I want to use my, my favorite fact about cosh and sinh, which is what? We know what? Cosh squared minus sinh squared is equal to what? Yeah, one. So, lo and behold, x squared minus y squared is equal to one. There you go. This is the Cartesian equation for that path. Not quite done though yet, right? What do I have to say about x? In fact, that cart, what's, the, what's the solution set to that Cartesian equation? It's not just the red path, right? Yeah, it's a hyperbola. It also has this over here, right? So this has both the red and blue, um, you know, paths. If I just wanted to describe the red path, what, what, what qualifier should I slap on the equation? X is greater than or equal to 1. Very good. Okay, guys. So, how would you parametrize the blue path? What are, the par what are natural parametric equations for the blue path now that we've, we've gotten this far? I'll do the easy part. Y is equal to sinh t. What do you want to make x equal to? Very good. Y equals minus cosh t. Excuse me, x equals, I mean, x equals to minus cosh t. And then, of course, minus cosh t, those are parametric equations which describe the blue half of the hyperbola. Yep. Would it be negative because of the negative axis? Right. It, well, cosh is, cosh is larger than 1, right? So if I want something that's from minus 1 to infinity, like minus cosh is a good candidate. And also, I already know that like minus cosh squared plus minus, minus cosh parentheses squared minus sinh squared is going to be equal to 1, so it satisfies the equation of the hyperbola. From, that's just, it's right in front of us there. So guys, I have a question for you because this is the question I think that sometimes confounds students. Geometrically, what's t? By the way, t is not sacrosanct. You could take t and replace it with s or lambda or some other letter. It's just a parameter. It's a placeholder. It's not like x or y or r or theta, right? x and y are Cartesian coordinates for us, right? They have a specific meaning as it relates to the plane, right? That's our standard setup, Cartesian coordinates, right? Or polar coordinates, right? Polar coordinates have a standard setup too. They're, they're fixed functions that give you a one-to-one -one correspondence between these values, r and theta, or x and y, and this, this geometric thing that we think of as the plane, right? The coordinate system. What is the relation between t and the plane? Well, that's example dependent, right? T has different meanings for different curves, for different paths, right? Do so you guys have any, any questions about this concept of a parametrized curve yet? 
right? <clears throat> so, there's lots of interesting questions you can ask about parameterized curves, like what's its arc length? What's the arc length of a parameterized curve? You can ask this question, right? Um, and I'll show you how to do that. Would you guys like to see the arc length right now, or do you want to see more examples of parameterized curves? I think we're going to do, what's that? More examples, okay. I'll, 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 I'll take you up on it. Let's see here. Um, so most of my examples from this point on out, well, basically they just play this game here. Um, you know, how do you parameterize? All right, what if you just wanted to parameterize like one half of the circle, what would you do? Or just say, maybe more specific. You just want to parameterize from here to here. You do, all you do is what? You just say pi less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 pi, right? You just cut down the domain of the path, and then you get what you want. <clears throat> Let's see here if I can think of a. So you're saying go zero to pi, go to zero to pi, but use minus sine three, minus three sine t instead. Yeah, that that would also work. You know what else would work? Um, to get this, I could also do, say, r2 of t. I'll say r2 of s equals to um, 3 cosine of e to the s, 3 sine of e to the s for s, let's see here, for <coughs> what range of s? Let's see, to get e to the s equals to pi, I put s equals to log of pi, and I put log 2 pi. That would be another way to parameterize that lower half of the circle. What would the difference be? I mean, obviously the domain of the path is different, right? Conceptually, what's the difference? If you were to animate this, right? If you were to draw the parameter as it progresses with time, linearly with time, the speed at which this was drawn would be uniform, right? Do 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 like just just uniform, right? This guy, on the other hand, starts out a little bit faster, and it ends faster still, right? Because the exponential increases like that. So it's, it's the angle that it's spinning sine and cosine through goes faster. In other words, the speed of these paths are different. So that's one of the things we can do. There's an ambiguity here. As you think about a given curve, you can parameterize it with different paths. A single point set allows many different parametric descriptions, infinitely many, in fact. Here, y equals f of x, right? That's some curve, right? Here's its graph. So the graph of f is what? It's the point set x comma f of x, in my case, such that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. All right? That's a graph. So one parameterization of this that you can do is just r of t is just what? t comma f of t. 
In other words, x equals to t, y equals to f of t. This is a very, in some sense, silly parameterization, all right? So any graph can be recast as a parametric curve by this simple, simple move. But what else could you do? Like, if I wanted to illustrate a different, suppose I want to, I want to say R2 of, you know, say lambda, something, comma, something else. And I, I want, I want zero less than or equal to lambda less than or equal to one to be the, the, the domain for this parameterization of the graph, same graph. How would I do that? What could you do? So this was for what? A less than or equal to T less than or equal to B, right? So here's what I do. Here's how I think of it. I want to make a zero, right? Basically, I need to adjust the parameter, right? So if I subtract a from this, I get 0 less than or equal to t minus a less than or equal to b minus a, right? That's almost what I want in terms of the, the range for the parameter. How do I get that b minus a to become 1? Divide by b minus a, right? So this suggests that I should set lambda equals to t minus a over b minus a. If you solve that for t, right, you just plug that into the other one. Let's see here. So like, um, let's see, if I solve that for t, what do I get? I get t is equal to lambda times b minus a um, plus a, right? So <coughs> it follows then that the equations I want are nothing more than a plus lambda times b minus a, comma, f of lambda times b minus a plus a. That rescales the parameter of the graph. I mean, it rescales the parameter um, such that it starts at 0, it ends at 1. And as, 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 as lambda ranges from 0 to 1, what happens is this ranges from a all the way to b, right? And so does this. And they track, right? When there's x here, there's x here. So that's exactly what you need to be on the graph. This is a parameterization of the graph based on the parameter going from 0 to 1. Why, why did I do from 0 to 1? Just, just to have an example. I mean, you could do from 0 to 2, right? You could do all kinds of stuff. You could go twice as fast. You could, you could, uh, you could do something like this. Let's say beta. Um, now this this I would need what I would need um, I would need that. If I was going to use this, I would actually need what about the, the x? I would need, I actually need a and b greater than 0 for that to make sense, you know. I can't make x equal to something squared unless it's positive, right? Make sense? I mean, I, I guess you can't, I mean, they're, they're, you're, you're still limited by laws of algebra. There are things you can't do. But there are so many things you can do. The question is, why would you do them, right? So, 
Anyway, I will, in the upcoming lectures, describe to you how we calculate the length of these parameterized curves, right? And that's, that's the main application, I suppose. But then we might want to do other things like, for example, you, you, could, you could mix these two concepts. You could describe a curve in terms of a parameterization built over co polar coordinates. You could do that. Um, but anyway, mostly we just think about parameterized curves. This is, this is very, very important to Calculus 3. Calculus 3 is best understood almost universally in terms of parameterized things. For curves, just one parameter. For a surface, you need two parameters. But the parametric way of thinking is, is well, I, in, my, in my view, it's what Calculus 3 is mostly about. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. So, thanks.